there's something so charming about a chronograph. The look of them, the fact that they're interactive, and sometimes, like with this, chronographs can feature some pretty interesting watchmaking. And despite all that, I'm not really a chronograph guy. The few I've had didn't stay in my collection for long. I think it's just because I didn't use their timing functions. And yet, and yet, I adore this watch. In the immortal words of Ulysses Everett McGill, It's a fool who looks for logic in the chambers of the human heart. This is the Zenith Chronomaster Original, or rather this is a Zenith Chronomaster Original. In 2021, Zenith introduced the Chronomaster Original line, and they did so with a dizzying array of options. Different dials, case metals, and even a couple with some ice. And in the lineup, I completely miss this reference. The first time I noticed this one is when it was offered to me for review. This version of the Chronomaster original doesn't have a special name, and despite looking vintage inspired, it's actually not the truest homage. Homage to what? I'm glad you asked. In 1969, Zenith made history by developing the first automatic chronograph movement, or was Seiko the first? Or was it Hoyer, Breitling, and Hamilton? More importantly, does it matter? No, it does not. At least I can answer that with certainty. Despite the debate about who was first, Zenith planted its flag in the ground and named the new watch and the new movement El Primero, the first. Points for brashness. The 1969 El Primero featured three watches, the 384, 385, and 386, each differently styled but all using the same new automatic chronograph caliber. It's the 386 that this watch is something of an homage to. There's been some kind of 386-ish watch in the Zenith lineup for many years, but in 2020, Zenith discontinued the last El Primero watch in favor of the Chronomaster Sport and the Chronomaster Original. The Chronomaster Sport I covered in a review a while back. As the name implies, you know, it's sporty. 100 meters of water resistance, 41 millimeters in diameter, and a ceramic bezel. The Chronomaster original line, however, is a bit more refined and classical, but both collections share the same movement, the caliber 3600. All the Chronomaster original watches are 38mm in diameter, 13mm thick, and 46mm long. They have 50 meters of water resistance, they weigh 80 grams on the leather strap, and have, deep breath, 19mm lug spacings. Fine. The plain steel references on leather straps cost $8,400, or you can get them on a bracelet for $9,000. On my 7-inch wrist, the watch is just perfect. Despite having a large, complicated movement, it's not heavy. And even though it's technically 13mm thick, the case is only 11mm thick. 2mm of that thickness come from the good-looking sapphire crystal. Those 2mm still count, but somehow it makes the watch feel and look slimmer. I think 38mm is a perfect size for this kind of watch. I know there are quite a few people out there that won't consider anything below 40mm, because either they're a large human or they wish they were a large human. But for a watch like this, that's all dial, this looks bigger than a watch that's 38mm but has an external bezel. The Chronomaster Original comes on a matching leather strap with a push-button butterfly deployant clasp, and it's real good. This reference is styled as a reverse panda, which means the subdials are light and the main dial is dark. Now, I'm a total sucker for the original styling of the 386 dials. The overlapping subdials and their blue, silver, and gray coloring. It's a combination that to me has always looked fresh. I'm also not a fan of tan loom. You know, loom that's made to look like it's aged over the last 50 years. But I don't know, this dial looks amazing. I'm completely won over. They took away the colors I like and they added a treatment that I don't like, but I can't help but enjoy this. And the loom is surprisingly potent for having a tan coloring in daylight. But the star of the show might be the Caliber 3600 movement. The 3600 was first added to a regular production watch only in 2021. Like all El Primero movements, the 3600 beats at 36,000 vibrations per hour, or 10 times per second. It's a relatively high beat rate for a watch, and this beat rate allows for some pretty cool measurements. While most chronographs can measure only down to a single second, 
The Caliber 3600 can measure one tenth of a second, which is great if you ever want to, if you if you need to measure, if you ever want to show off. I guess that's the point of this. Sometimes being cool is a necessary function, am I right? Even with the high beat rate, the 3600 has a pretty impressive power reserve of 60 hours, and it's not too hard on the eyes either. Not spectacular finishing, but not bad for the price. Yes, yes, Grand Seiko, Grand Seiko, I know. Anyway, I'm not a chronograph guy. I don't care for tan loom. I don't have any use for timing of a tenth of a second. And yet, here we are. I really like this watch. In pricing, this Chronomaster original falls between two famous chronographs, the Omega Speedmaster Professional and the Rolex Daytona. The Daytona, you know, forget about getting one for the $14,000 list price. The Speedmaster is not for me. I respect it, but it just doesn't excite me. This Chronomaster, though, this does excite me. The look, the tech, the history. I also like that it's not ubiquitous and from a smaller brand. This is probably not a watch I'm going to buy. But if, unlike me, you're a chronograph person, I think you should take a look at the Chronomaster original line from Zenith. I'm sorry to say that you'll probably find one that you want to buy. Rest in peace, bank account.